Hypoglycemia, also known as low blood sugar, is not fun. It makes your brain feel like it's covered in a layer of moss. You seem to move around in slow motion, and the possibility of this event turning dangerous in a matter of seconds is real. If you have had any episode of hypoglycemia, you can probably agree with me that you cannot process information normally. You can spend precious time staring at food in your pantry or in a candy aisle, knowing you have to eat, but being absolutely frozen in your ability to select something. It's like your body completely turns off its decision-making ability. Heck, sometimes it's so bad that you can almost seem catatonic and you can't even remember your name. Good times. But no matter what, you have to stop what you're doing, devour something carb-filled, and wait for it to get better. And many times you overeat because of this hunger and extreme cravings that you have, and minutes later you roller coaster back with a bad blood sugar high. Lows are just a byproduct of living with diabetes. There's not a diabetic around who hasn't had one. When you get one of those really crazy lows, you may feel bad for a little while or even a long while after. Maybe you're gonna have a headache or you're gonna be slightly confused or you're just not gonna feel like yourself. That's because your body just went through a struggle. And a severe low can also make you feel emotional and helpless and frustrated. And hypoglycemia never seems to happen at a convenient time either. I have two personal experiences that stick out in my head that I wanna share with you. So it was Christmas time in New York City, the most wonderful time of year, right? Well, I was window shopping on Madison Avenue when my glucose levels took a nasty turn for the teens. Unfortunately, I had nothing in my handbag to help me combat this crash, and I usually do. I'm usually prepared, but this particular time, I was not. Everywhere I turned, I saw nothing but designer clothing boutiques. And normally, that would be my description of heaven, but at this moment, I don't think Giorgio Armani was gonna help me. So here I am, sweating, profusely and running in what I felt like was slow motion on a crowded sidewalk. I saw this Godiva chocolate boutique. <laughs> I ran through the door. I pushed ahead of everyone online and keep in mind it was the holidays and there was an absurdly long line of people buying candy as gifts for people who they didn't either really know too well or didn't care enough to think about a creative gift. I don't know. But anyway, I pleaded, well, I really demanded uh, to the guy behind the counter, just give me anything, just give me something, chocolate, anything, please, now, please. He stared at me as though I had two rainbow horns sticking out of the top of my head. But I think he quickly caught on to the fact that this was some sort of weird emergency. Either that or I was robbing the place. Regardless, he quickly started handing over truffles, caramels, and chocolate dipped strawberries, and I think that I swallowed them all whole. Now, as a diabetic, you know, or you will quickly find out, that chocolate is not the ideal food for bringing up your blood sugar rapidly because it also is filled with a ton of fat. However, desperate times call for desperate measures in this case. It took a long while for my levels to get back to normal, but when I was finally able to put together a sentence, I explained why I was acting like a lunatic. By the way, my blood sugar registered an 18 that day. That was the lowest I have ever seen it go. That same very scenario has repeated itself many times in my life, but one other story stands out for me to talk to you about. So I was scheduled to give an informational lecture to a master's program at Columbia University on the topic of public relations. I checked my blood glucose before going out and the meter said 106. Perfect. So I strolled out there, I started my little dog and pony show, and I said the first few sentences clearly and distinctly, but then I lost my train of thought. I immediately turned into a hot mess. Before I knew what was happening, the words, I'll be right back, flew out of my mouth and I ran off stage. It was pretty much my worst nightmare come true. I quickly checked my blood sugar and my very bizarre behavior was explained. I had a lovely low of 32. There was really no time for humiliation to set in. I had to get my blood sugar back to normal. Luckily, this time I came prepared with candy. I guess my meter was wrong when I checked it the first time I went out. And this happens all the time, truthfully. That's why right now I'm on the Eversense CGM, the Continuous Glucose Monitor, so I have a whole lot more faith in the accuracy of my numbers. Finally, I made my way back out on stage again. I cracked some jokes at my expense and carried on. And by the way, my boss at the time, and I won't mention any names, but she owns a really big lingerie company if you want to make some educated guesses. Anyway, she decided to tell me I really should have taken my insulin and taken better care of myself. You know, that particular event really built up my confidence. I know that sounds ironic, but it really did. And it gave me so much of the character that I have today. I 
recommend you all try it. It's like the diabetic person's equivalent of being naked in front of a crowd. <laughs> so what's truly interesting about low blood sugar is that the symptoms are never the same from person to person or even from episode to episode. There are many different types of lows and you can experience a different one every day or even a few simultaneously. I wanna tell you about all of the different kinds of lows and I'm curious to know if you have experienced them all too. Tell me in the comments section below. Get it? Low. Okay, so the first one is the underwater dream world low. And by the way, I named all these, they aren't technical names, okay? With this one, your brain is all fuzzy and you feel as though you are moving in slow motion. It is absolutely impossible to focus on anything. The next one is what I like to call the surprise low. Now, normally I love surprises, but not when I have just randomly tested my blood sugar and holy smokes, it's 45. I didn't even have any signs or symptoms that I was in this dangerous territory. But surprise, here I am. Next up is the sweaty low. Clammy, hot, and uncomfortable are the best words to describe your body. And it's made even worse when the temperature outside is above 70 degrees and you're doing anything except sitting motionless in front of a fan. The next one is perhaps the strangest feeling low. I call it the tingly lipped freaky low. It feels as though your lips, your tongue, and sometimes even your chin can vibrate off of your face. They're so numb. It is the most peculiar sensation that one can ever imagine and experience and one that can't even be replicated if you tried. Next up is the cranky low. You snap at everyone and anyone in the vicinity. You may swear, scream, and overall have rage-like behavior. You mother! Next up is the hypo hangover low. You know, Diana Ross might've had the sweetest hangover she didn't want to get over, but a hangover from a bad low almost feels like one from alcohol, except you weren't enjoying yourself the night before. Now this next low is one that I hate also. It is called the double dipper low. You finally come out of your low and think that things are stabling out, when one slams you right back down again. Now you have to ride out this wave too. And this situation is not only limited to two instances, oh no, the fun can continue for hours depending on how generous you are with your insulin each time you take it. Next up is the nocturnal low. You shoot up wide awake in the middle of the night and know without even testing that you are hitting rock bottom. The sugar reaper has come to attack. Time to chug some juice. Here's another one that I hate. Actually, I hate them all, so let's just establish that, okay? But this one's called the full, but still have to eat low. What a drag, you just ate a big meal, your belly's full, but you over bolused, and now you have to eat more to fend off the low that's coming. Next up is the unconscious low, and I'm gonna talk about this one really fast because I don't like this one at all. This one is very self-explanatory and the very worst of all the lows. Okay, moving on. This is called the meet your liver low. Your liver has announced to your internal organs that you aren't supplementing your body fast enough with sugar and it decides to intervene by spilling out stored glucose into your bloodstream. Your body will always respond with a skyrocketing high after. The one-sided conversation I have with my liver goes something like this. Liver, stick to the stuff that you're supposed to be doing. Clean out the toxins from my blood. You know, let me, let me handle the diabetes side of things, okay? Thanks. Lastly, and kind of ironically, it's the race to the finish line low. Have you ever tried to beat out a low? You know, you have one looming, but you want to finish up whatever task you're working on before you go tend to it. What I've come to realize is that this is a pretty stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway all the time. In fact, I'm doing it right now. My blood sugar is 60, but I just want to finish this video. And luckily I'm done. That's it. It is time to eat some Smarties. Please let me know the lows that you experience. Write them in the comment section below. I want to hear all about it. And thanks for watching as always. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and show me the love by hitting that like button down below. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.